Inside of Costa Rica, there are a lot of volcanoes. Now, a few of them are still active. We didn't have the time to go all the way up to an active volcano, but I saw that between the clouds that were gathering and the smoke that was coming off of the volcano, it was really interesting. In fact, it was the movement in change over time that I wanted to show. Sure, I could have made a great picture of what kind of looked like a mountain out there in the range, but it was when you captured the movement of clouds and smoke or steam that it suddenly resonated, that's a volcano. Now, the cool thing is capturing multiple images is pretty straightforward. Most of your cameras have this ability built right in. You just turn on the internal intervalometer and it will capture multiple images at set intervals. If you don't have this, you can use external tools like Trigger Trap or a camera release remote that could be made from your camera manufacturer or a third party. All in all, this is really simple to do and you'll find here on lynda.com that we've covered time-lapse photography a bunch. What I'd like to show you though is how those images could be developed. How we take, in this case, some JPEG photos and then process them and assemble them using Adobe Photoshop. That's right, I said Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop has now the ability to work with video files, which includes time-lapse photography. Let's build out a time-lapse sequence and render out a movie that's easy to share and post to a website like YouTube or Vimeo. In this case, we were on JPEG only mode, but this is also a good chance to show you how to work with JPEG files because maybe you're using a GoPro or that's all your camera supports. I've got all the images here and they look pretty good. What I'm gonna do is do some quick processing. All right, let's head into Photoshop for a second where we'll build this out. I'll launch Adobe Photoshop and then make a new video project. File, new. From the preset category, choose film and video, and then use the size pop-up. This will allow you to set the size of delivery. 1080p 2997 is pretty common. You could then click OK. It makes a new document, and you'll click the button to create a new video timeline. Now, click the plus button to load in the file itself. Navigate to the images that you have. In this case, I'll select the first JPEG. Make sure you sort by name and that you look at these in ascending order from the smallest number to the highest. And then click Open. You'll see what it did is it loaded it in as a video clip. Now, we still have the white file in front, so I could select that and press Delete. And now I see just the time-lapse file behind it. Don't expect this to play in real time, however, because it's not a native video file. Right now, you'll see that it's about five seconds long because I'm only using a small subset of the frames. That might be enough, though. If you want to change the speed of the video, you can do that later after you create the initial video file. To change this, I recommend that you click on the clip and press Command-T for Transform. It'll give you the ability to scale now you might need to grab the handles and pull. If you hold down Shift and Option or Shift and Alt, you can actually scale proportionately. While you're at it, not a bad idea to press Command or Control R for rulers and drag that down. You can see my shot is slightly crooked, so I'll take this as a chance to rotate it and straighten the horizon. Looks good. Let's pull that down just a little bit to get some more sky in there and press the return or enter key. When you do, all of the images should be transformed. And you see that it took the video file made from the image sequence and built out a new transformed copy. You can now take advantage of any of the adjustment layers. This includes the ability to add a curves adjustment using auto, Zoom in there a little bit, and with the on image tool, we'll just lift slightly to bring out the volcano a bit while recovering some of the highlights on top. I'm a big fan of the black and white adjustment. This allows me to make a great black and white image, recovering important details in the sky and balancing that out, and then simply blend it using a mode like soft light or overlay. And you'll note that that did a nice job of boosting the contrast and really popping the sky and the clouds. 
If it's too strong, you can always lower the opacity to blend it back a bit. If you'd like, you'll find the lookup table option, color lookup, and this has several presets available. You can use this to really pop the colors within the scene. All sorts of different options here that you can load in to give it a particular look or find additional presets that you download. I'm gonna go with late sunset here. It's a bit strong for me, but I'll back that off with the opacity slider. And now it's just a subtle adjustment that changed the time of day. Once you're ready to export, just choose file, export, render video. You can now give it a name. I'll call this one volcano underscore web and choose a folder. Just click the select button, navigate to a folder you want to use and choose it. Make sure you're using the Adobe Media Encoder option and you'll see the file format. Now, you can go with H.264 and a high quality file is great to just make a really good high resolution one that you can use. If you wanna to go to broadcast TV that way, choose from these presets or you'll notice towards the bottom options for YouTube and Vimeo. Let's go with YouTube HD at 1080p and 2997. You'll see everything gets loaded in. When you're all set, just double check the frame rate, look it over once more from top to bottom, and then click the render button and it will generate the file. Depending upon the length of your sequence, it may take a little bit of time to process, but when the export video progress bar is complete, you'll have a video file that's ready to use. If you'd like to learn more about time-lapse production or post-production, you'll find many courses available here on lynda.com to get you started.